right now we start with question number four all right so they say to us we've got a ball that is falling freely when its downward speed is uh, reaches 9.2 meters per second it explodes into two equal parts they say part one uh, goes straight up to a height of 13.7 so i'm just going to add that into my drawing all right so it goes up uh, 13.7 meters above the point right of explosion right now they say to us um, uh, define in words the term the term momentum as applied in physics so remember that momentum is simply just the product of a body's mass and its velocity right so the next question says calculate the initial velocity of part one right um just before the explosion okay so what we're going to do is we know that uh, this ball must have been moving at nine meters and uh, 9.2 meters per second right so i know in this case that uh, this must have been the uh, velocity before but remember it went to a height of 13.7 meters right but this is up until it reaches its maximum height. So its maximum height must be zero. And remember from that time on, um, after the explosion occurred, right? The initial velocity, we want to know the velocity after, right? So it's initial velocity, we know the final velocity is zero, and we know that it now accelerated due to gravity, right? So I'm going to say, right, so we're looking for the initial velocity okay so that's vf squared that's vi squared plus two times g delta y okay so the final velocity 13.7 uh, actually sorry the final velocity rather is zero so that's zero squared our initial velocity is what we are looking for two times now, what I'm going to do for the purpose of this question, let me consider the direction downwards as positive, right? So that's going to be 9.8, right? Remember that acceleration, gravitational acceleration always is downwards. Okay, 9.8 times delta y. But this object is displaced upwards. So that's minus 13.7, right? So let's find out what our initial velocity is. Okay, so we're going to have 2 times 9.8 times 13.7. But remember, when I take it to the other side, it will become positive. So that's 2 times 9.8 times 13.7. Okay, so I get, um, so VI squared will be 268.52. So to find the initial velocity, right, we take the square root of the answer. Okay, so our square root is 16, uh, 16 rather, 0.39. So let's say it's 16.39 meters per second. Now, ladies and gents, remember we've taken a square root and all the time we must check whether our answer is going to be plus or minus, right? So remember, uh, when the explosion took place, part one went up. We set down what is positive. So this means that it must be negative uh, 16.39 meters per second, or we can say 16.39 meters per second down, uh, sorry, upwards. Okay, right. So that's the velocity of part one. Now, they say state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. So we know in an isolated system, right, uh, the momentum before collision is equal to momentum after. Or you can say in an isolated system, the total linear momentum is conserved, right? Okay, so finally, they say calculate the magnitude of the velocity of part two just after explosion. So we're going to have, right? So remember initially, okay, I've got the sum of their momentas before collision, which is equal to the sum of momentum after collision. All right, very important. We've already chosen a, 
a direction. Now, before collision, remember that the whole part was just one part, okay? So part one and part two were together, right? So let's assume that they've got a mass M because we're not given the mass there. So the whole mass is mass M, but the velocity, they were moving at 9.2 meters per second, right? So that's 9.2 meters per second downwards, and we set down is positive, right? And then now, after collision, remember that part one went on its own. So this will be half the mass, right? And we know that part one went upwards, okay? And uh, we said the velocity of part one is negative 16.39, so that's minus 16.39, okay? Plus part two, remember it's half the mass. Remember they bro we broke this in half. So that's half of M, the mass of the entire thing, right? Multiplied by, we are looking for the velocity of part two, okay? So the velocity of part two, final. All right, now... Let's try and work this out. And by the way, I didn't write the, uh, the formula. I should have, right? So I'm going to say the mass of part one, velocity of part one, right? Plus the mass of part two, velocity of part two, final. Okay, right. So here we've got, we've got the mass uh, of the entire part right, multiplied by its velocity, right? So uh, what can we do? We can divide by m, right? So if we divide by m, everything divided by m there, what I do on the left, I do on the right. You can see that we are actually going to cancel the m out. Okay, so we are left with 9.2 right, which is equal to a half of negative 16.39. Okay, so 0 0.5 times minus 16.39. Okay. Okay, we've got minus 8.195 uh, plus a half of vf right now let's take this to the other side okay so that's 9.2 plus 8.195 okay we get 17 okay and we're going to multiply that by 2 so vf okay so multiplying all of that by 2 so i find that to be 34.79 meters per second. So this is the velocity of part two after collision. It would be 34.79. Please verify this and make sure that you get to the right answer. All right, and that is really how the cookie crumbles. Very interesting question this. Right, and we leave it there and we're going to move on to question five.